Hello, Oliver here, and welcome to my Diplomacy Media Wars 2 post-game analysis retrospective post-mortem whatever thing. Uh, this is going to be an unscripted video, so I have no idea how long it's going to be. It could be 10 minutes, could be 3 hours. I hope it's not 3 hours, because I have a social engagement in 2. Uh, I do have some notes here that I've written on paper to do things, and I've got this presentation here that I'm going to go through. Uh, so, you know, th there's going to be some structure, but... You're not going to get the polished, I don't know, fillerless. You you don't you're going to get lots of that. You're going to get lots of awkward pauses. Uh, let me just warn you that about that now. Uh, right, what is diplomacy? I'm sure some of you will be wondering. Uh, it's a board game about invading each other in Europe at the start of the 20th century. I made a video on it. I'll put a link to that in the description. And <clears throat> excuse me, what is media wars? Uh, Media Wars is a gathering of diplomacy content creators from across the internet who have come together to play a virtual game of diplomacy. I apparently count as one of those, so that was fun. Uh, this started in March and it finished, I want to say last week? I think it was last week. Uh, but yeah, finished recently, been going on a short while, uh, as we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll see how long it took. Uh, so how this video is going to work... I am going to introduce the players do, and give some bit of background, uh, then go through the game turn by turn, kind of giving my thoughts, sharing some of the press that we have, the communications between each other, and then end kind of with some final thoughts and kind of a, a few of whether I achieved my goals and what I learned through the whole thing, really. Uh, one thing to note about the turns is that, well, some of the press will have weird turn names compared to what the title of the slide says. Uh, that's just because we're negotiating during the phase that's coming up, if that makes sense. Just ignore that. It all makes sense. I'm pretty sure I've got it all in the right order. Uh, that's the important thing. Anyway, uh, let's go onwards. And first off, we're going to meet all of the players. So England in this game was played by, life, played by Florida Man, who is a guy from Florida, I assume who makes lots of videos on diplomacy, and they're quite good. Uh, he goes into analyses of his games, some sort of uh, introductions for new diplomacy play uh, players, all that sort of good good stuff. So he was playing as England. Next we had Go Horns Go, or Ed Sullivan, from The Diplomats, playing as Germany. Uh, so The Diplomats, who are they? They are some people in the diplomacy internet sphere who run kind of a blog and a podcast talking about games they've played. Uh, it should be noted that uh, Ed has actually already made a post-mortem for this Media Wars game and I think so far is the only person to have actually completed theirs. So I, I definitely go, uh, definitely recommend going and checking those out for some different perspectives. In fact, check out, the, uh, check out everyone in this list just in general. And also check out the stuff they've made for Media Wars 2, because I think it'll be quite interesting for everyone to kind of understand all the different perspectives that are going on. Uh, and the Diplomats is Go Horns Go and also Umble the Heap, who was our game master for this game. So I don't know, was was there some kind of vested interest going on there? Some, no, I'm, I'm going to say no. Right, next, uh, Russia was Lady Razor from the Diplomacy Briefing. Uh, the, the Diplomacy Briefing is a newsletter that's just that details things happening in the Diplomacy universe. Uh, Lady Razor does a lot of the illustrations, both for the briefing and other Diplomacy things. I think she's done stuff for... The, she? It's a he. My bad. Um, he has done stuff for the uh, Diplomats as well. Uh, but it should be noted that partway through the game, Lady Razor dropped out and was replaced by a village idiot, also known as Ewok. Uh, as far as I can tell, apologies if I've got this wrong, village idiot is not actually a content creator. Uh, and it's actually just, well, not just, but is a high-level diplomacy player. Last time I looked, they were ranked 33rd in the world on one of the main diplomacy sites. Uh, that will be an important point later when we come to analyse the game. So we'll see what happens there. Turkey was me. Who am I? Why, why, why do people care about my opinion on diplomacy? Uh, well, I made this video last year, and as you can see, if I bring up the laser pointer, 
it is creeping ever so slowly towards 100,000 100, views. I believe it's now the second most popular video on diplomacy on YouTube, which is rather ridiculous. Uh, as, as I said, it's linked in the description, so you can go and watch it there and find out what diplomacy is and have, well, yeah, experience my analysis of the game as a whole. Uh, yeah, I was playing Turkey, and that's me. Austria was Flash from Legendary Tactics. Legendary Tactics, it's a YouTube channel uh, where they do lots of different board game stuff. Uh, not just Diplomacy, although Diplomacy tends to be some of their most popular stuff. Uh, interesting story about Legendary Tactics. So my house at uni, we recently got into Settlers of Catan quite a bit. Uh, and I walked in to see my housemate watching this video here on the Catan strategy guide. And I was like, ooh, I, I kind of know that guy. And, you know, my housemate didn't care. But it was, it was still kind of fun. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There will also probably be a lot of clearing my throat. Uh, so that's Legendary Tactics. Italy was Ambi from Diplomacy Games. Diplomacy Games is a podcast which is run by Ambi and Kana, two Australian guys. They drink beer and talk about diplomacy. It's quite fun. Uh, they invited me on a an episode last year, so you can go and watch that, or listen to that, rather. Uh, they talk about lots of different diplomacy stuff. They have interviews with people who actually matter in the diplomacy world as well as me. Uh, so, yeah, def definitely go check them out. And finally, France was Ezio from Diplostrats. Diplostrats is quite a popular diplomacy YouTube channel. Uh, Ezio isn't actually the... Uh, it's probably not the voice of Diplostrats that uh, some of you may be familiar with. Uh, I think that's Marcus. I saw a fun comment on uh, my teaser video for Media Wars where someone said, oh, have has Marcus let Ezio out of the Diplostrats basement to play this game? So, yeah, there's, they've got lots of very, very long videos. <laughs> Look at this, 10 hours. Uh, very long videos talking about diplomacy games that somehow still accrue loads and loads of views. So well done then. Well done them. Uh, hopefully this video isn't going to be anywhere near as long as those. So that's a quick rundown of all the players. As I said, definitely go check them out. Part of the purpose of Media Wars is to kind of cross-pollinate and cross-promote each other. So yeah, I should get all of my now 10,000 subscribers to go and subscribe to all of these people. You know, they've got great content. Uh, right, add to the game itself. So, what were my goals in this game? I should say the goals kind of framing I stole from Ed Sullivan, who himself stole it from Zach Moore from the first Media Wars. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's just a, an interesting way to frame it. I'd, I guess I, I put my goals together retrospectively as opposed to beforehand, so they won't have quite the same feel. But I think they were pretty accurate to what I was feeling at the start of the game anyway. So what, what did I want to get out of this game? I wanted to survive past 1902. Um, the reason for this is I'm... I, I Well, compared to everyone else on this board, I'm willing to bet that I have played the fewest games of Diplomacy in my life. I think it's probably about 15, maybe. And half of those were online, half of those in person. Maybe, maybe more in person. Um... Not a whole lot of them actually, like, finished as well. So I'm actually pretty inexperienced in Diplomacy. And yet I have that video that's got lots and lots of views on Diplomacy. So just pre-use, if you fake it for long enough, you can make it, apparently. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, I wanted to survive past 1902 as kind of a marker of, oh, I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm not too inexperienced. I kind of know what I'm doing. On a similar note, I wanted to not completely embarrass myself when playing this game. Uh, because as well as being fairly inexperienced, I'm not actually all that good <laughs> at diplomacy. Um, I I'm good at the tactics, right? I can manoeuvre things, you know, the mathematical part of the game that I went, to went into in my original video. Uh, the communication, however, not my forte. I'm not very good at persuasion, as as we'll see, I guess, uh, during this during this analysis. <clears throat> and my final goal was to end up with something entertaining. Because that's kind of the whole point of Media Wars. We are broadcasting this game for all of you guys. Uh, so hopefully this video is entertaining, it's educational, and everyone else's videos are, are the same. Uh, thanks to an hopefully entertaining game that we all have played. 
Uh, so, yeah. What, what were my prospects for actually achieving any of these goals? Well, I drew Turkey. These were randomly assigned countries. Uh, I ended up with Turkey. And Turkey is pretty damn good for definitely achieving the first of my goals. Because Turkey, it's down in the corner over here, It just it, it's pretty hard to take out. It's just too well defended. It's also quite hard to break out of that corner box, as we'll see. But, you know, the fact that it is Turkey, it's in the corner, it can be defended, and I knew basically as soon as I got Turkey that I was not going to be eliminate, eliminated immediately. I may have a pretty pathetic game throughout and eventually be dwindled down to elimination, but I would not disappear straight away, which was a good thing. Uh, so I was Turkey. I also quite like playing as Turkey. I've had some success with them in the past. I've, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I've played as every country across my not many diplomacy games. And Turkey, I have won maybe two games with. So that's, you know, quite a, a relatively decent success rate with Turkey. I, I, yeah, I like them to play just because they are very defensible. Defensible? De defensible. And I like kind of the security of having, of not being able to be... What what are the words I'm searching for here? I like the security of uh, nobody being able to get the jump on me, so to speak. Like, it's easy to build a defensive line and you kind of know what's happening there. Okay, uh, so that's all the preamble out of the way. Let's move on to the actual game. Uh, this is the game board. We used Backstabber, which is a diplomacy interface. Uh, I've not used it before. I actually found it quite, you know, intuitive to use, quite fun. Would definitely recommend. Uh... I was Turkey here. We've got Flash as legendary tactics, Austria, Lady Razor as Russia, and Ambi as Italy as my immediate neighbours. But of course, in the opening of diplomacy, your goal really is to speak to everyone. You need to kind of get a handle on how they feel, get a handle on any any alliance structures that are forming this early on. Uh, often that's not the case because people play their hard, their cards close to their chest until they themselves find out what's going on. Uh, but if you, well, if, if you can sniff out anything, it's always useful. So I've got the board over here. What's going to happen here? I've got several pieces of press from each turn that I'll show up alongside the board and kind of comment on those. Oh, I, sh uh, I should mention, I've just seen it in my notes here. The game was set to end in 1915, if no one had won by that point. So we would either go until someone had won, go until we just the remaining players decide on a draw, or we'd go until 1915. So, potentially quite a long game. But we'll see. Uh, I guess there are actually a few few more things on my notes here before we get to the French message here, so I'll talk about those. So, as Turkey, uh, it's quite a common thing to ally with Russia in the opening in an alliance called the Juggernaut, and kind of move your way across Europe in an unstoppable wall. Uh, the trouble with that is people, especially high-level diplomacy players, will know that's happening. They'll know it's coming, and they can s certainly form a defensive line against it if they work together. But I, th I thought, you know, I, I would play the sensible way for now, at least in the opening, uh, just because I wanted to make sure I survived at least a little bit and had some, you know, was, was able to make people respect me. <laughs> Made people think I knew what I was doing. So yeah, Jug Juggernaut is um, a pretty safe starting option for Turkey, I would say. Uh, what have I got next? I, I guess I could talk about the potential Turkey opening moves. So the usual one is Constantinople to Bulgaria. That's a terrible arrow. I will be drawing lots of terrible arrows. Uh, Ankara to Black Sea. The idea is you bounce in the Black Sea with Sevastopol from Russia, so neither of you get the Black Sea. Uh, I talked about this in my uh, Game of Knife video. It's kind of a prisoner's dilemma situation where you both have to move in to make sure the other doesn't actually get in, because if either one of you gets into the Black Sea, the other is kind of screwed, especially early on. Uh, so those are the kind of the common moves for those two units. The next thought is if you're trying to go against Russia, you go this way into Armenia with Smyrna. If you're going against Austria, or perhaps not decided yet, you instead go this way. Up to Constantinople, you've got to backfill yourself. 
So let's erase all of that. Um, there were actually a lot of negotiations with Russia over what our opening moves should be. Uh, he wanted to do something a bit unconventional. Uh, I kind of thought that... Well, I, I wanted to go with the conventional route. Just because I knew it was safe. <laughs> I was playing very safe at the opening. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but he wanted something unconventional. And I guess we'll get to his messages in a moment to kind of understand how we sorted that out. But anyway, uh, to the messages with everyone on the board. I guess I'll start with France. France's opening message was quite fun. Uh, he said he wanted a long distance relationship. Because obviously Turkey and France not going to interact much in the early game. At least on the board, uh, definitely interact with your messages. That's always good advice. But yeah, he was suggesting we have good relations from the start, which I had no problem with. You know, no, no issue with that. Germany, I spoke to as well. We had good relations as well. Well, as good relations as you can get with like two messages. And I said, you know, I'm friendly with France. It would be nice for me if you two were friendly as well. I want us all to be friends. Let's not go to war. Uh, let's let yeah in this game about war let's just be peaceful and he said yeah uh, france germany turkey alliance why not that could be f quite fun uh on to england i spoke to him as well uh and i said hey i you know hit it off well with france and germany it would be good if we could be friends as well i'd like i'd like you all to be friends you could all be my friend we could all be friends we could all be very uncomplicated and nice and of course that wasn't going to happen but it was, it was a nice place to start, the obvious place to start. Uh, and we kind of decided, oh, we're on the opposite side of the board. The only thing we can really do is share information between each other. So we said we were going to do that. And he said, yeah, a Western Triple, which is the alliance of England, France and Germany. That could happen. That could happen. And I think they were having some discussion. Well, from watching Ed's videos, they were having some discussions along those lines at the same sort of time. Uh, here we come to Russia, and as you can see, he talks about, you know, one, the conventional way. So Turkey is quite a strong nation in diplomacy, uh, so he's saying that current style seems to be squashing them from the outset, which didn't didn't fill me with confidence, I will say. Um, so he, he said... He said he wanted a game with excitement and drama. This is what I was saying about him wanting unconventional stuff. stuff. And he was suggesting some openings, so uh, Army Smyrna to Ankara. If I bring up the pen again, so he was suggesting something like that. Smyrna, Ankara. Uh, and then, after a bounce here, in the next turn, we would move Ankara to Constantinople as kind of a way to get fleets moving into the Med. Uh, I wasn't too sure about that. Uh... I don't have my messages here, but I, I wasn't 100% on board with that. Because I... Well, yeah, I, I guess I should reveal what my initial plan for the game was. So I, I wanted to do the juggernaut thing with Russia. Uh, as you do. And as we'd move, eat up some people, eat Austria, eat Italy. Maybe around here. Uh, I would let him make all the decisions. I'd be a very, you know, a, a very obedient... Turkey to my Russia uh, and make him think you know I, I've got him I've got him where I want him he's not he's, he's a good guy he's not going to stab me and then I'd stab him <laughs> that was the plan you know, when he was when his back was turned at the opportune moment I was planning to just go up into the north destroy everything win the game <laughs> yeah uh, but right even given my intention to let Russia make all the plans, at least early on, uh, he did seem a little eager to suggest that I do something weird. Uh, he, he seemed quite eager to tell me what to do. I, I wasn't necessarily... That wasn't necessarily a problem. It was just something interesting that I, did, I noticed. And it made me a little wary of following through with his uh, intentions entirely. So let's move on to the next uh, player, and this was Italy. So uh, obviously I'd spoken to Ambi before on the podcast, so kind of knew each other-ish. Uh, 
initial discussions, there wasn't really much to talk of. Italy going for Tunis in the south is the obvious move. Uh, there's nothing else that they can really do unless they do, they launch a full-on assault against Austria, but that would be quite risky. He said he'd want to be friendly with France and Austria, at least in the initial stages, which seems fine. Uh, but we'll see how that works out. <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. And finally, Flash... Uh, i just rereading his message here. Yeah, there wasn't really much that we discussed, Oster and I, right at the opening. Obviously, we had to decide, the three of us, Austria, Russia and Turkey. There's a lot of tension going on between those three. Uh, usually, it's two of those team up to crush the other. So, you know, w w that did have very big impacts a couple of turns down the line, that sort of mode of thinking. And we will get to that in a moment. But yeah, in the opening, there was little to speak of. Uh, the opening of Diplomacy is... I, I enjoy a lot, really, because it's... Everyone's just gobbling up the neutral centres in between, and you kind of... You're figuring out where people stand, but you don't have to make any committal judgments yet. And committal judgments? Things I, I'm not very good at. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I find it quite fun where we're all just gobbling up the neutral centres and talking to each other at this stage. Uh, but at the same time, very little of substance is actually said. So I went through all of that, those messages and spoke to people about it. And, you know, I'd, I'd made... I, I, I'd fostered good relations, uh, which is always a good goal to have in diplomacy. But there was little concrete on the board yet so that I could tell. Uh, if we move on to the next turn. So, first set of moves, Spring 1901. As you can see, I did kind of go with Russia's option, Russia's idea about moving upwards into the Black Sea. Uh, as I said, the idea with this was that I could then move the fleet west into Constantinople and build another fleet in Smyrna in the full, in the full turn once I'd taken Bulgaria and then use those two fleets to go on a rampage through the Med after Italy, probably Austria as well. So obviously I took Bulgaria, you'd be an idiot not to, and we got that going on there. Uh, one thing that surprised me uh, straight off was that Russia went with a very northern opening. You can see he moves Moscow to St. Petersburg, uh, St. Petersburg to Bosnia, that's a common common move there. But uh, Warsaw to Silesia is very weird. Well, I was expecting him to collapse inward on Austria from the top, and he just didn't do that. He went north, very much north. Uh, the other main interesting move that you will see on the board right now here is Italy's move into Tyrolia. Um, I, that seemed to ruffle a lot of feathers, both in the German and Austrian camps. I did actually listen to the Diplomacy Games episode where Abby spoke about this move uh, and what he was trying to achieve with it. I'm afraid I can't actually remember what he was what he was trying to achieve. I probably should have uh, listened to that again in preparation. But we combine that with Warsaw moving to Silesia and Marseille moving to Burgundy. And Germany is not in a very good position here. Or at least, well, a very scary position. It's not bad, because he, he still has options to, it, to work with people. But it's certainly... I, I would be uh, quivering a bit if I was Germany. And it seemed to be that was the case. Uh, anything else of interest? France moving north and the fleet into mid-Atlantic. Uh, not looking to get both Portugal and Spain in 1901, which I thought was interesting. That's not usually a big problem because it's difficult for anyone else to get there early on. They're usually just France's hunting ground. Uh, everything else seems pretty standard, I will say. Austria being quite trusting of Italy in the opening, so this Torelli move would have very much been a bit of a shock. Well, I don't know. We'll have to listen, see what uh, <laughs> we'll have to see what their thoughts are when they get their retrospectives out. But I can't, I can't see how that was negotiated between them. Basically, uh, yeah, I guess main thing in spring 1901 is I was working with Russia a little bit and readying a position against Italy, 
so kind of preparing some fleets to go out here. Uh, you may suggest, say, well, why would you even bother with this bounce if nothing's going to happen and you know nothing's going to happen? Well, it's it's an insurance policy against Russia, right? If Russia does something that you're not expecting, like move to Romania, then you've suddenly got the Black Sea, which is pretty bad for them because you can then support yourself into Romania. Uh, so it's kind of agreeing this bounce here ensures that Russia does what you want because if they don't, they're in a worse position, if that makes sense. Uh, but if in the event that I did get in, then this unit would move up and I would be kind of breathing down Russia's neck. Did I put any press in here? Yeah, I spoke about... Um, I spoke to Russia saying, oh, I, you didn't tell me anything that was happening in the north there. I'm a bit surprised by that. Uh, and he thought, yeah, Warsaw to Silesia was exciting. And it certainly was. You know, he said he wanted unorthodox stuff. That is very much unorthodox. And I, I like this line here. My foot is on the accelerator and the juggernaut is ready to go. The juggernaut, remember, is uh, Russia, Turkey. So, uh, you know, he seems pretty committed to this idea at the start. I, as I said, it was my initial plan as well. So I was happy with that. Uh, I don't know whether I was reading too much into it, though, because it sounded a bit kind of double bluffy, being this enthusi enthusiastic about it. Uh, let's just say I was a bit wary. Well, not wary, but um, non-committal at this point. Uh, what was the next bit? Yeah, uh, so talking to it about Russia talking to Russia about Italy, I should say. Uh, my, As I said, my plan was to get two fleets into the Med, this one to Constantinople and build a new one in Smyrna. And I was thinking, well, Italy's going to see that and there's nothing else that Italy would think other than, oh no, he's coming for me. So I think at that point, everyone would know that we were working together. But until then, it was best to kind of conceal that thought, uh, as I said. The rest of the board will know the power of the Juggernaut and will be prepared to go against it. So concealing that for as long as possible is always in your best interests. Well, maybe not always, but is often in your best interests. And we, we were negotiating, so he wanted to get into Romania on the next turn. And, you know, I could have supported him in, support from Bulgaria in Sebastopol into Romania. But given Austria's moves it didn't actually seem likely that I'd need to. The only thing that could stop hit him was uh, Serbia bouncing Romania, which would, um, would leave Romania completely open, which I wasn't entirely opposed to. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just not support him in. I'll let people think maybe there's not a juggernaut going on for a tiny bit longer. Because I, I had a few messages from people talking about uh, this move here and how it looked... As if it wasn't arranged, and it was fully arranged. Like we we'd agreed, this is was this was his his suggestion. But the fact that there are two bounces for me, kind of makes it look as if something has gone awry in the plan. So maybe people were thinking, oh, maybe there's not a juggernaut, juggernaut after all. And I thought I could support that view by just holding in Bulgaria and not supporting anything. Uh, I spoke to Italy about his move into Tyrolia. Asked him, are you going against Germany, going against Austria? Because uh, all of a sudden, as we said, Munich has three units of three different powers suddenly around alongside it. Uh, he said, <laughs> it was an earlier, move, earlier planned move that I intended to change, but then he forgot to change the order. I'm not sure I believe that. We'll, ha we'll have to listen to Ambi's... Uh, words on his decision there later. But I, I, yeah, listening to the podcast episode he did do, it sounded like it was intentional. I, I don't know. I'm just, just thoughts here. I, I really don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it, intentional or not, it definitely destabilized things in the center of the board. Uh, apparently he also said the same thing to Flash as Austria. He told me the same thing. I too find it suspect. 
Uh, he said he wanted, according to Austria, Italy said he wanted a big opening. That's definitely a big opening for Italy. It it makes a statement. Not sure what statement that is. I don't think anyone knew what statement it was, but it was a statement. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's definitely different from the uh, very boring Italian thing of just moving units down into tu uh, Tunis, preparing yourself there. So it, it's excitement. We've got players doing different things. We've got Russia not doing the standard Russia thing of collapsing on Austria and kind of moving towards Germany. We've got me doing a slightly non-standard Turkish move set in the start in the opening. We've got Italy moving into Tyrolia, France moving quite north. Uh, England is doing the very English thing. There's nothing weird about that. Austria is doing a somewhat conventional Austrian move, but still perhaps the most optimistic of Russia's conventional opening moves, I would say. And Germany's doing conventional Germany things. Uh, so yeah, I spoke to Germany about its position. I said, Russia said we'd be moving against Austria, and instead he's moving against you. Germany said he just didn't know what was happening. Not sure how much of that I believe. Uh... <laughs> This, yeah, this is going to come up a lot. You just don't know. You, you really don't know what people are saying. And this is part of the trouble I find with press in diplomacy, for me personally, is I just get into situations where I can't tell what level of bluff people are on. Is it a double bluff, triple bluff, etc.? I end up overthinking things and yet not even coming up with an answer. So that that was definitely the case with Russia in the opening. Uh, kind of thinking, oh, is he... He's not doing what I expected him to do, and yet he still says he's friends with me. Should I be worried? I don't know. His moveset wasn't antagonising towards me, I will say. Like, it, the usual opening towards Galicia and Ukraine. It puts pressure on Austria, but it can also put pressure on Turkey via, you know, support into Romania. And then you've suddenly got this wall here. But yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything from Spring 1901. Uh, so as I said, plan for my moves in full was just to hold in Bulgaria and move this fleet west and vacate Smyrna for another fleet build. I did exactly that in full 1901. Everything went exactly as planned. Russia also took Romania. That was planned. I didn't support him in. That was planned. Uh, Austria decided to support himself into Greece, which is pretty sensible. And we also got a resolution to the Munich situation, where Germany actually got French help to move into Munich. I suspect that was in exchange for Belgium. So France just walked straight into Belgium. It's pretty good for him. Uh, it Just in exchange for helping Germany retain his own centres, which I think was pretty cool. Apparently there was some uh, disagreements between Italy and Russia here. Italy was expecting Russian support, and Russia just held. Russia didn't do anything. I should mention here that uh, France, Germany working together was the very beginning of a sea lion alliance. That is uh, France and Germany. Well, it's a France and Germany alliance. Uh, and we saw the very beginning of that with them deciding to work together here. Well, we'll we will see how that develops because that's an interesting thing to look at. Austria, as I said, got into Greece. So he's actually had a decent 1901. He's got two builds. They bounce each other out. Uh, Austria and Italy bounce each other out of Venice. Italy gets Tunis. Uh, Germany gets Denmark. England gets Norway. Nothing really surprising about much of that. Russia attempts to bounce England out of Norway. But just completely fails. England was fully prepared to deal with that. Uh, yeah. I, so at this point, I'm... My plan is, is going all right. I'm working with Russia. We're working together, even though he's not being entirely transparent about what he's doing in the north. But I am a bit worried about Austria because he's had a decent, he's had a good turn. Like Italy hasn't actually messed with him, which it looked like he might. It looked like he might after spring, and he's managed to get two builds right on my borders, which you know it looks a bit worrying from my my perspective. 
sorry, just moving my notes around. Uh, the build in 1901 was obviously a point of contention for me because Russia having vacated Sevastopol, if he builds another fleet in Sevastopol, then it's pretty much game over for me. He can support himself into the Black Sea and it's, it's all downhill from there. So I absolutely wanted him no, no builds in Sevastopol, which he, he was fine with. Uh, he said, I'm committed to this juggernaut again. And his moves definitely suggested that uh, he wasn't moving against me in any any way. He was doing some weird things in the north that I wasn't really in the loop with, as I said. But I, you know, I was still happy to work with him. Uh, yeah, that was the main, the only real negotiation we had for Sevastopol. I spoke to some other people. I think I spoke to France about what my build would be uh, and what Russia's build would be. And said, yeah, I, I just... No build in Sevastopol, and it's fine for me. So let's look at what builds we did have. Uh, I built the fleet in Smyrna, as I intended to. Now I have two fleets aimed at the Med. Uh, Greece, bit of an obstacle now. I probably should have seen that coming. But, it, you know, not a massive one. Russia did indeed leave Sevastopol open, build two armies in the north, which I was very happy about. The trouble is, everyone does now know it is a juggernaut because of that. If Russia had been, you know, Russia, the build on Sevastopol is just very much an indication of Russia's intentions for the whole game. So no, no, no unit in Sevastopol at all, and a fleet in Smyrna, very much said to everyone, okay, it's a juggernaut now. Uh, but they hadn't, they hadn't moved against the juggernaut, so to speak. Um, but that would have been quite difficult to do just in the first two turns, I guess. Uh, let's talk about Italy and England builds. Italy built a fleet here, which I guess is the usual Italian fleet. Italian fleet, Italian thing to do after you get your built from Tunis. But it's still kind of a, a signal that he is preparing to defend against either me or France in this case. I was actually speaking to France at, at the time about what he was going to do attacking Italy, whether I could get him to do that, and we could kind of converge from either side. Uh, he didn't seem committed to that. He, was, he he said he was up for it, but he didn't. That that didn't seem to be his plan, so to speak. Uh, England also built a fleet in London, which probably disrupted France's plan a bit more as well, because suddenly, what well, he even though. Right, even though he's had a standoff with Russia already, he's building a fleet in London, which is much more southern oriented. So I, I, I think France was a bit spooked at this point, and we'll see how that turned out. So as we move on to the messages, uh, Austria came to me speaking about how we should team up against Russia, which is fair enough. Uh, it is obvious suggestion in this situation he seems to have things you know dealing with things okay with italy he's not under massive pressure from anyone unless me and russia team up so yeah makes sense to him uh both were claiming that the other was scheming against me actually and this went on i think for both turns in 1902 Hold on, let me just check something. Yeah, no, th th this, this, so, <laughs> I should say. Uh, this was one of the most stressful moves of the game for me, the lead up to spring 1902. Because I had to, I spoke to Austria, spoke to Russia. Uh, and they were both suggesting big plans to help them against the other. And they both said, oh, the other is scheming against you, they've got this big plan. Uh, but it's okay, because we're friends. Um, I'm going to tell you this plan, and it's going to be fine. <laughs> Just very, very much destabilised my mental position, for lack of a, lack of, lack of a better term. Uh, what was that? Yeah. Somewhere in here we have Austria's message. So, he was talking about how Russia tells me that he's really keen on setting up a huge stab against you. He's likely blah, 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 blah. He's collapsing on Sevastopol, Galicia, and Ukraine. Now, that seemed unlikely to me. 
because it would go against the move set he already had. And if he was trying to do that, it would have been much more effective to do it earlier. But if we see, he'd be doing something like that, which would be a bit of a problem for me. Not a massive one, but still. Uh, but I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't convinced. If he really was stabbing me, he could have built something into Vestal. And it would have been game over. Well, not, maybe not game over, but uh, game very much complicated. So I, I wasn't entirely convinced by what Austria was saying. I understand why he said it. Uh, he didn't. He, he was in a position where he had to turn one of us on the other. But, I, you know, I wasn't sure. Uh, one of my biggest worries was what if those two are actually working together against me at this point? You know, they're, they're both saying the other's working against you. And they've come to me with a plan. But what if they're actually going to do that? And once again, we see that kind of my struggles with unpicking how much people are lying. If that makes sense. So, yeah, uh, I did tell Russia, you know, Austria may be playing 4D chess or 5D chess. <laughs> and he's saying, oh, you know, we're Austria has come, uh, Russia has come to me with a plan to stab you. And I told Russia in case that might, you know, endear me to them or let them know the jig was up in some, way, some sense. Uh, it should also be said that Austria's proposal was to trade Greece for Bulgaria. So I'd get Greece and he'd get Bulgaria. Which seemed to me a little bit risky. Uh, is the word I would use there. Uh, it could work. And if we were in that position, then it would be quite an advantageous one to go from. Because I could then focus on just jutting out into the med, attacking Italy. And he'd have Russia surrounded. <clears throat> but I thought, well, how how, how is that going to work? <laughs> you know, it's a bit of a weird arrangement. There's lots of things that could go wrong. And it seemed like a last ditch attempt from Austria to kind of get me on side. Which is odd, because it's only just the start, beginning of the game. And I think proposing this risky, an idea, or this weird, an idea early on was maybe a bit of a mistake on his part. I don't know. I, I can't really talk on that. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, suspect to Russia. I spoke to Italy, because I knew that, um, with Austria having had a good 1901, even Russia and I working together couldn't have really made much progress against him. So I was hoping to get Italy on side against Austria. And I thought this move to Tyrolia was kind of an indication that he'd be up for that. So I spoke to him about that, but we didn't really make any progress there. Uh, he said he was away camping. I think that was true. We had a pause. We had multiple pauses during this game. That may have been one of them. So he, he just said, oh no, it's fine. We'll just not coordinate. We can talk about this later. Which was a bit annoying at this stage, uh, especially if we are going to move against... Austria. I, we need to coordinate things. Uh, I spoke to France as well. Uh, he said that Russia said they are moving into Galicia. And that was a bit bit strange because um, Austria told me that Russia was going to move into Galicia as part of his big stab plan. Uh, <laughs> obviously, the, as, I, as I drew on a moment ago, if I can get the pen up. The big stab plan supposedly would involve this sort of arrangement. if Because Russia said he was moving into all three. That's the only thing that could have really done that. So if uh, France is telling me Russia's moving to Galicia, I need to know where. Because if it's coming from Silesia, that kind of backs up Austria's view. And if it's coming from Warsaw, that may means that Austria is talking nonsense. <laughs> Uh, all France is talking nonsense and they're all just conspiring against me. Who knows? Uh, so I asked France that. And this was like very near the deadline. This was about half an hour maybe before the deadline for the moves for Spring 1902. I asked France, okay, do you know which move, which unit he's moving in? And he said it was Silesia. And I was suddenly, oh no. That matches what Austria is saying. Maybe Russia is going for a crazy stab on me that makes no sense and yet it's still happening. 
uh, so I should work with them. And I spent, you know, this was close to the deadline already, and I just, I, I ran this through my head so many times trying to work out what I should do. Uh, in the end, I decided, well, I don't like Austria's plan. I think it's not going to work. So even if he is correct and Russia is moving against me, I'm not 100% confident in going behind him. And it went against my initial plan as well to work with, with, with Russia until the opportune moment. So in the end, I decided I'm just going to trust Russia. Sorry, Austria. I'm going to trust Russia. And we see spring 1902. Uh, Austria moves against Russia, actually does push him out of Romania, and moves Greece into Bulgaria, which was one of the agreed moves of our, you know, our, our what we had in, in mind. Um, well, what he, the plan he had proposed, which is interesting. And in fact, uh, Russia did move Silesia into Galicia, but had moved Moscow into Ukraine instead of moving it to Zvaspol or something. So he did kind of what he was saying he was going to do as well. And I was left at this point saying, oh, oh no, I've distrust distrusted both of these people and they've actually done pretty much exactly what they said they were going to do. It's just I've, I've sided with Russia here. So a Austria did get into Romania. Uh, that was, you know, a bit of a setback to the juggernaut, but I didn't mind it too much, possibly selfishly, because it wasn't my centre, and it was Russia's, and it put, put him back in a region close to me. I still felt okay about the position we were in. You know, I, all of my moves into the Med worked. I had the fleet barrier available. I also had the extra army to, to uh, back up Bulgaria. That was quite nice. Let's look at some other things happening elsewhere on the board. So everyone stood stood off in, in the Ruhr which was quite funny. Uh, I just imagined a load of armies running into each other from each every direction. Uh, if England clearly had some agreement with Germany going on, uh, thinking that Germany would vacate Ruhr, would vacate Holland, I should say. Uh, but then he didn't. So that's kind of the first hint that there's some animosity going on between Germany and England. And since Germany is allied, well, partially allied with France there's some animosity, animosity possibly some animosity from France towards England as well so yeah that was kind of a hint of the way things were going and I'm sure Florida Man knew that I've watched some of his, his videos um, was, this was perhaps some of his videos on this game this was perhaps the moment he realised that uh, things were going to be difficult for him so to speak uh, other interesting things happening this turn. France moves into Spain. That's not interesting. Well, I guess it is, because um, we are having negotiations at this point about him moving his fleets westward. It's eastward, sorry. So, like, Marseille to Lyon. Portugal moving to Spain. That would have been what I would prefer, because it puts him at odds with Italy. But he didn't do that. He decided to move upwards into the Mid-Atlantic and take Spain with this fleet. Which was a bit... Uh, I was a bit disappointed by, but it wasn't a massive setback. Uh, Italy positioning himself against Austria, which was kind of interesting. Germany positioning himself to take Sweden as well. At least that's what I thought at the time, with the fleet moving to Skagrak and another one moving to Denmark, kind of surrounding Sweden. And I was speaking to Russia like, oh no, are you, are you going to lose Sweden? Because it's completely undefended and Germany can just waltz in. Uh, but Russia's com communications at this point were a, a bit uh, infrequent, I should say. Uh, and we'll, that will come to a point in a moment. So we'll talk about... Oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll talk about it now because I've got this message here. So Lady Ray's... It's at this point... The spring 1902 moves went through and it was just the retreat, this retreat of Romania to Sevastopol, that we we had a very long delay for that retreat. Uh, first waiting for Lady Razor and then because we had to redo the whole turn, well just the retreat turn again because Lady Razor was replaced by Village Idiot or Ewok or Greg. 
so uh, I'd been, yeah, we, we exchanged pleasantries at the start, said, oh, yeah, we're allies, it's all good. Uh, I, as I said, I neglected to actually research who Village Idiot, Idiot was. They just turned up one day in the Discord and uh, Umble Heap said, oh, this is your new Russia. And I said, cool, that's, that's fine. Uh, had I had some forethought, I would have looked up and found that they were ranked number 33 in the world in, on one of the diplomacy sites or something. And realised, ah, I've suddenly got a much more powerful ally next to me. Oh, well, much more powerful nation next to me. I should probably th bear that in mind when I'm thinking through their moves and suggestions in future. But that's not going to come into play for a while, but it's definitely something to think about. Uh, anything going on? See so yeah, how that was the introduction to Russia, the, or the new Russia, I should say. Uh, speaking to Italy, we were negotiating what we'd do in the fall. And he said, well, if, if there's a juggernaut going on, I'm not going to help you. Which was annoying, because with Austria's position, we were unlikely to be able to make progress without Italian help. And I thought, you know, this push into Venice was quite indicative of uh, Italy wanting to go against Austria to some degree and having a fleet in Ionian would also help um, but yeah he just wasn't really having it how many million dull times have we seen that which is fair I guess playing it safe in this instance um, was not playing it safe <laughs> you know going, going for the juggernaut alliance uh, even though it was tactically and strategically the safe option, kind of on a meta level, it definitely made people distrust me, especially Italy. Uh, and I, I, I tried to, you know, I tried to work up how much I was affected by Russia's loss of Romania. I said, "Oh, Russia's quite weak. They can be, they can have Sweden taken. Um, they're about to be a very weak ally." And yeah, you know, I revealed my plan. I was planning to stab Russia when an opportune moment presented itself. We're not there yet. Uh, I said, well, maybe if you're willing to help, we could get to that opportune moment a bit quicker. I, d I don't know how well that went down, but we will, well, we will see what the result of it was shortly. Uh, speaking to Russia negotiating how you're going to move in fall he wanted me to be quite aggressive with my moves uh quite go on go on the offensive so move things forward bulgaria to serbia aegean to bulgaria hold on let me just draw these on go to serbia aegean to bulgaria constantinople support this attack here uh which was a very it was a very aggressive move, uh, and I thought a bit of a risky one. Because I thought, well, Austria could realise he can't hold Romania. Uh, and supports it into Bulgaria instead. So then he'll be going... Oh god, I'm drawing red on red. This is going to be pretty impossible to see. I'm sorry. <laughs> so if, if he supports from Greece as well... Uh, then I'm suddenly left in a position where I'd lose Bulgaria, which I didn't want. Uh, you know, selfishly perhaps, but I, Bulgaria, it's it's the only thing I had at this point. It's the only centre I managed to get, managed to take. I was quite attached to it, uh, so I was much I much preferred the idea to kind of hold my line because I knew in the position I was in that I couldn't be invaded. Unless Russia and Austria decided to work together, which seemed unlikely at this point, I was pretty strong. Like Even Italy and Austria working together couldn't have done anything against me. I did suggest to Italy that he could just tap Greece from the Ionian to, to potentially help if uh, Austria decided to attack Bulgaria. But that wasn't the case. Uh, so yeah, I, in the end, I decided to play it safe and I managed to convince Russia that I that that was what we needed to do as well so I said I also said I'm unwilling to be the, to go aggressive towards Italy because I want them on our side 
I, I want them to know that uh, we I can be a good, a, a good ally. We're not aggressive towards them, even though we would be eventually, perhaps. As is, such is diplomacy. But yeah, it, so in the end, I decided I'd just hold a line. And in full, I did indeed hold that. So you see all of my moves here are just holds and supports. Very much holding the line here. But you will see Italy and Austria working together to tap me. Um, so if, so with Italy's thing here, it could have been something like that. But Austria supports himself into Bulgaria, Italy tapping Aegean to remove that support. It wasn't, and I could have, you know, I was defended from that because I had chosen to go with the safe, in quotes, approach. Uh, but yeah, we I did fail to get Russia back into Romania, which was our plan here. Uh, other thing to note, I could have been aggressive and gone both fleets into Ionian with support and kind of surrounded Greece. Uh, obviously, you can't know ahead of time, but I, looking at this map, I kind of regret not doing that. I think I should have potentially seen that coming. Because Italy... Well, you, you can see he moves Tunis to the west instead of leaving it to support Ionian. And if I'd managed to get into Ionian then, I'd have quite bountiful pickings of this sort of area here with these two fleets. Oh god, these drawings are a mess. I am so sorry. But yes. Uh, other things we can see going on in the board. The sea lion has picked its prey going after England. So you can see that Germany, instead of attacking Sweden, which I thought was what was going to happen, has gone into North Sea and somehow convinced England to move out, uh, potentially with the promise of working together against France. And France has gone up into the north, into the Irish Sea, and is th this is very, very troubling for England, it has to be said. Um, so we've got a sea lion in full force here. Trieste, you will see, is taken by Italy, but I think, well, I think it's all but confirmed that that was a planned move between them, because the thought was that they were allied, Austria and Italy at this point, and as part of their alliance, Austria would get Romania, and then Italy needed something as compensation, so we'd get Trieste. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so I think that was obviously planned, because Italy has not, he's not supported himself in. He's not made any other moves that are aggressive towards Austria. In fact, he's moving against France now. Uh, meanwhile, as I said, Germany does not take Sweden and in fact is helping Russia against England, which is obviously helpful in the German-French fight against England, but was uh, quite telling to me as it said that there's, you know, Russia and Germany on good terms. Not what I... Not really what I wanted. I wanted Russia to be a bit distracted up in the north. So he wouldn't be he would be less less inclined to turn his attention towards me, so to speak. Uh and Italy <laughs> tried to pass off this attack on Trieste as him stabbing Austria. Or at least being aggressive towards Austria. And I wasn't buying it. You know, I, I saw his tap against the Gian, which could have helped Austria had my moveset been different. And he wasn't he wasn't going aggressive against Austria, he was going ag aggressive against France. And I'm just like... Uh, I, I thought it was a bit of a weak bluff, perhaps, from him. And he wanted me to support him into Greece. I thought, well, that would be very helpful. And... I guess I kind of forgot. <laughs> I forgot all this later. Uh, I, well, I think I remember. I, for, I forgot and did in fact end up supporting him into Greece. But we'll see what happened there. Uh, Russia was talking to me and said, okay, well, Italy's not a friend. We can't trust, we can't rely on him. Uh, but he, it, Russia... While I was stalling in the Juggernaut, Russia was making progress in the north. So that that's what I wasn't really happy about. Because um, I really wanted... I really needed to be moving forward as well. 
Uh, so we get to the builds in 1902, and England disbands army in Finland, which is fair. <laughs> uh, uh, he has to defend his homeland now. France builds a fleet in Brest. I tried to convince him for this. I think I tried to con convince him to get fleet in Marseille to kind of go against Italy, but he was fully committed against England right now, and I think he, he was. Um, he was talking about how England had been the aggressor, I believe, and that he had to respond. Uh, apologies if, if I put words in your mouth there, Ezio, but uh, that seemed interesting to me at this point in that France has obviously been the aggressor together with Germany. So yeah, it's pretty obvious at this point that England is going down, even, even by 1902. So if I had been playing England... In this game, I think I would have failed my goal to survive 1902. Well, I, I would have survived 1902, but uh, not not in spirit, shall we say? <laughs> but now I'm Turkey. I'm I'm holding up. I'm doing all right. So yeah, England kind of screwed. Italy is built another fleet in Naples, which was irritating, as it meant he had more support there, and I couldn't break through. Uh, Italy's justification for tapping the Aegean and cutting my support there was <laughs> it's, was a, a it's a passive aggressive. You should have supported me into Greece, like I asked. Well, I, I, okay. I mean, you didn't know I wasn't supporting you into Greece for sure. I could have still been doing that, and then you would have felt a bit silly. But we'll see. Uh, and I thought, well, I'm not going to be making progress against Italy and Greece down in the med right now. Yeah, you know, if they are working together. They've got three against my two. Uh, it's positioned so that I could stay where I am, but even with all this mess going on up here, I'm not going to be not going to be making progress at this stage. And uh, here we see the beginning of um, one of my fatal flaws in this game, which is and one, well, one of the flaws of Turkey in general. Uh, it's as I said, it's difficult for them to break out of that corner. And. I got very frustrated by that, and it just seemed like no matter what I did, I was just going to stay here, hold my own, but no, not go anywhere and just eventually be picked off by someone once they've surrounded me. And I kept looking for ways to get out of that and be aggressive. Uh, and I think, I think I should have been more rational about it and looked at the long view a bit more. So this was kind of the first instance of that where I thought, well, I, I want things to happen. I can't just stay here and support myself. I can. Well, you know, I can stay here and support myself, but it won't be very entertaining. It won't make for good content. Uh, and it won't it won't make me feel good, good about the game because I'll just be stuck in the corner the whole time. So I, I was thinking, well, if it injects some life, I can support Italy into Greece. That's fine by me. Uh, Russia also wanted me to do some aggressive things again. Uh, he wanted me to go into Serbia, tap Serbia again. Uh, and I thought, well, I did the safe thing last turn. I defended myself. I'm getting frustrated with how I'm not growing and Russia is. It's, it's, well, hmm, maybe I wasn't thinking that straight there because that would have it, doing the aggressive thing here helped Russia to grow, but whatever. Uh, I want to do something different, so... I'm going to agree to this, this time. I'm going to agree to Russia's proposal to be aggressive. And as you can see, <laughs> that did not go well for me. That wasn't a good idea. I suspect, looking back at the game and in the long run now, that is entirely what Russia wanted to happen. Uh, I feel like he knew, whether directly or through the great fine, that, Russia, that Austria was going to go after Bulgaria this time. And he knew that that would get him Romania and lose me Bulgaria. Which I didn't know at the time. I thought, well, I, I my initial thought was, okay, that's unfortunate. But that's that's my mistake for being aggressive. I should stay in my corner. I, I should be beaten back into my corner, into my comfort zone. Uh, this is what I get for trying to make things happen. And as you can see down here... I did indeed support Italy into Greece with the same idea, like, I want things to happen. It didn't happen. Uh, but I, I I, had an insurance policy for that one, right? 
Um, Because if Italy had gone into Greece, my thought was, well, I can take Eastern Med into Ionia. Either it will bounce with Naples, in which case Ionia is free, and that's fine. Or I can actually get into the Ionian, which would be amazing. As it happened, that was kind of an important move anyway, because Italy was attempting to support Austria into the Aegean. And I cut that support. So while I was kind of ruining these things up in the north here, in the south I was kind of... I was a bit relieved about that, I should say. Uh, I can I had considered that this was a possibility as well uh, when I made this instant meta Ionian move, and I thought, yeah, that's that's going to be quite a sensible thing to do. It might lose Italy, lose trust with Italy, um, but trust with Italy seemed a bit unlikely anyway, shall we say. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the board, uh, look at these convoys. <laughs> these convoys from France and Germany are crazy. Suddenly, France gets two armies onto the English mainland due to some... I don't know. So, I don't want to say mistakes from England, but uh, poor judged approaches. I think, yeah, attacking the Mid-Atlantic from the English Channel rather than backfilling Wales or something was a mistake. And... The, the, yeah, death knell. Death knell? Death belt, what is it? it? England is shuffling slowly off this mortal coil. I will go with that. Uh, yeah, nothing else interesting to note. Russia and Germany just holding station against each other up here. Kind of being, okay, we're, we're, we're kind of friends. Are we friends? Let's be friends. Just kind of had to read that. Germany forced himself into Tyrolia. Uh, which was yet more evidence that uh, Germany and Russia were indeed friendly. Uh, which was... Well, I don't, I, I don't want to say that was bad news for me. It was bad news for me in the long run. I, it was, I, I was kind of ambivalent towards it at the time, because I thought, ooh, we have extra friends against Austria and Italy. That would be useful. <laughs> Uh, anything else? Oh, uh, Germany took Belgium from France, obviously planned as part of the sea line. Like, France is going to get builds on the mainland, Germany gets Belgium instead. It gets Belgium as compensation. So that's fine. Let's look at, at a few of these messages. So, it was at this point that Austria brought myself, England, and Italy together and said, okay, we've all been screwed this turn even though Austria was the one who screwed me. But, yeah. Uh, we've all been screwed this turn, and the other three powers look like they're working together, and they're going to be quite big and powerful. So we need to work together against them. So, uh, Aus Austria was, uh, was very... He, he was very persistent on stabbing Russia, I should say. So he was, um, yeah, I, it took, it took a lot of internal debate to think about, okay, how am I, am I stabbing Russia? Am I going against, because uh, I, I didn't see how that would gain me much this early. I wasn't in a position to profit off of that, that much. But I did agree that those three powers looked like they were working together. And they looked like they were going to do some damage to the rest of us. Now, I think from what I've seen of other people's perspectives, there was, you know, people knew that Austria and Italy working, were working together. That's obvious now. People knew that these three countries, France, Germany and Russia, were working together. They didn't really know my position. Like, they knew I was working with Russia to some extent. Uh, but... I think they were wary of how I might turn and they were, con you know, I, I was a bit of a free agent, so to speak, because partly because I was just so frustrated with not making progress here. Uh, but, uh, I should, yeah, it's important to note here that, uh, where is it? Where's message? There was one particular message from Austria. It may have been here, or it may have been later, where he said, okay, France is going to win. Uh, and he said it with such conviction 
and no one seemed to challenge him on it and they all agreed that I think I took that to heart a little bit too much and I became a bit too afraid of France and that definitely had a detrimental effect on the rest of the game for me as we'll see later. So I had lots of internal debate and lots of external debate <laughs> with Austria. So this was, uh, this was a very long message chain in that turn between myself and Austria as we were deciding, okay, uh, he was trying to convince me to turn against Russia and I was thinking, well, I don't know. I don't, know, I don't, I don't want to stab him now. Not when I don't really stand to gain much anyway, except protection for you guys. Which, you know, is, is something that is useful, right? I, that, that is a selfish perspective of I'm not gaining anything, but there was the, the altruistic view as well of uh, they're going to win unless we do something. Uh, but yeah, Austria spent many, many, many messages trying to convince me. And eventually I decided, right, okay, I'm decided Russia may have baited me into tapping Serbia. Because I, th I thought back to Russia's insistence on me making the aggressive moves here and how it had led directly to me losing Bulgaria. And I thought, well, maybe they knew about how the arrangement was going to work and they were fine with me losing, losing Bulgaria. And even though I had no evidence of this, I didn't like it. Uh, and it was the only evidence I had of anything anti-Turkish from Russia. But it was enough eventually to make me turn after all that internal debate. So I said, yeah, I'm going to do this. But, um, where have I? Oh yeah, uh, I didn't want to move against Russia immediately. And in fact, Austria, Italy and I came up with a plan where it would look like I was still fighting them at this point. But I was in fact repositioning myself for a better attack on Russia. Because as, as I said, you know, my current position was pretty trash against Russia. Like, I had no fleet anywhere here, which is a necessity if you want to attack into the north. So I, I needed either to have something disbanded so I could rebuild it in Ankara, or I needed to get Bulgaria back. Uh, so Austria, Italy and I were negotiating and we decided, okay, I get Bulgaria back from Austria to get a build. And I can retreat, so they can dislodge me from places here so that I can retreat fleets in Russia's direction. So I could have two fleets on the border of the Black Sea and get some supremacy there. Uh, so that was, I, I like that idea. I like the idea of um, kind of having plausible deniability about it, right? I, I, I could say, because I had some, I could have made moves that wouldn't have resulted in my retreat here. But they weren't, or, or the well, to come. But I, the moves that I did make were also relatively reasonable, um, at least from a perspective perspective of Russia thinking that I was attacking Austria and Italy. And I, you know, I liked I liked the idea of it. I liked the craziness of oh, we're going to make me retreat in a specific way so that I can attack Russia. And we see in the fall. Sorry, just moving that note over there. That the plan, in fact, worked perfectly. So, yeah, uh, they supported themselves in into they supported each other into the Aegean. Uh, I spoke to Russia and kind of justified why I was moving this way in a way that made sense. At least it appeared he bought it. I hope so. Uh, otherwise, well, not for any strategic reason, but I just it would feel I would feel better about myself if he actually bought it. Um, yeah, they supported themselves into the Aegean so that Austria could in fact retreat out of Greece once I had supported, once I had had some Russian support back into Bulgaria, and I would then retreat Aegean back into Constantinople. So in fact, it was a complicated plan, but it worked perfectly. Uh, I was actually in a position where I had another build, having taken Bulgaria back, and an extra fleet on the on the shores of the Black Sea, which was great. I was thinking, yeah. Uh, what happens when I build the fleet in Ankara, though? Russia's immediately going to immediately going to see, oh, I've stabbed him. Um, we'll see the debate about that in a moment. Meanwhile, uh, rip England, just rip England. 
I, I don't know what this was. Just a support from Norway, something into Wales. Uh, Backstabber does allow you to enter weird orders like this that are completely invalid. In gunboat games, apparently they're quite useful to kind of signal your intentions towards other players and kind of u- use as a method of communication. No idea what was going on with that <laughs> in, in this game. It's just a fun thing to see. So ig- ignore it. But yeah, uh, Germany and France have decimated England. He's just got Edinburgh left at the end of this turn. Anything else to note? Uh, Austria does actually get into Galicia, forcing Russia- a Russian retreat. Which was interesting. Uh, and we actually had a discussion, Russia and I, about where that retreat should go before he made the move. Because I was... I was trying to convince him to retreat in an optimal way such that he would build... It, it, he would be in a weaker position once Austria and I turned on him. Trouble is, there wasn't really an obvious way for him to do that. Like, if he retreated to Silesia, he would get the build f- uh, from Romania in Warsaw or Moscow, and he could just support Sevastopol, and in Warsaw he could move down into Austria. If he retreated to Warsaw, he'd just build in Moscow anyway, and he'd have more support than Sevastopol. So I was trying to trying to convince him, but I don't really think I should have been, because it didn't make... Well, it made a difference, but either way it was kind of not a good thing for us. Us as in me and Austria. Uh, and at this, it was at this point that... Um, I realised, okay, I'm going to be building a fleet in Ankara. Russia is going to see that and know that the jig is up. How do I swing that? I thought, oh, I could just say it's a misclick. Um, I could say, oh, I put that order in earlier and forgot to change it, you know, do an ambi. But it, at speaking to Austria, he suggested, okay, just tell him straight up. Um, I feel like... So as we see the builds here, and I did build that, and I told Rush- Russia straight up, okay, I'm stabbing you now, sorry. Uh, I feel like if I could have done that better, and I think it is my weakness as a negotiator and a communicator that meant that I didn't, I wasn't able to do it better. Uh, and that actually had big problems, because now now Russia knows that I'm working against him, he is fully prepared to defend against me. And I, I can't get an, yet another jump on him. Which is very unfortunate because he can move himself into a position where he is very defense, defensible against me. So that was annoying. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what I can really learn from that other than uh, get better at persuading people to do things. Well, not do things, but get get better at uh, lying. I don't like lying. I'm not good at lying. <laughs> then why do I play diplomacy? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Russia built Warsaw in the end instead of Moscow, which was an immediate help to them against Austria. So that was a bit of an, also annoying. I did feel very bad about my tra- betrayal of Russia. And uh, then we... So... Yeah, Russia's reply, Re- well, after the build phase, Russia sent this message, uh, was it something I said? <laughs> I felt very bad. Um, I genuinely felt quite remorseful about it. I, I'm i not cut out to play diplomacy. I'm just not ruthless enough for it. Uh, yeah, so I, I felt very bad, but I knew that it was what I had to do to kind of stave off those top three in the board, France, Germany and Russia. And potentially make some progress for myself, finally. Uh, Oh yeah, I uh, also spoke to France. Yeah, France um, noticed that fleet and was quite interested in it. And I basically straight up told him that Austria had got me on side by convincing me that he, Germany and Russia were working together. Was that a good idea? Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I feel like Austria is going to be mad at me seeing that I just straight up revealed it. But I don't know. I think I was hoping it would uh, destabilise them. 
and make them feel that okay they kind of know what's up we need to change tactics I don't think it really did <laughs> there wasn't anything I could do about it anyway uh, but, but, uh... oh yeah it's also interesting to note I had no reply to this message at the time so I just straight up told France I knew what you're doing and he didn't reply which was interesting it, it was at this point that the Commonwealth was established. <laughs> so this was Austria bringing me, Italy, and himself together. And the meta was... Um, okay, so we're, Austria F F is Canadian. Flash is, is Canadian. Ambi is Australian. I'm British. And that they were saying, okay, everyone else on the board is American. Let's be the Commonwealth and stick together and take them on. Which kind of fell apart the moment I told them, okay, well, the previous Russia was British and the new Russia is Canadian. And they, they kind of ignored that and said, no, we're the Commonwealth. It's fine. <laughs> Which I find quite funny. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it's a, it's a sensible alliance at the moment, regardless of what it's called. Um, yeah. So that was the Commonwealth. And then we move into spring. So, obviously, I'm supporting... I had a bit of a debate both with um, Austria and with myself about how I should move against Russia now because if I get the pen up I have two options basically I can go Constantinople to Black Sea and Croatia Armenia and the, p the problem here is that Russia is going to move to one of these definitely and will consequently uh, bounce one of my one of mine out so I'm guaranteed to get one of them. I don't know which. The other option was I could move in to Black Sea and support myself from Ankara. And in this way, I'm once again guaranteed to get one of them, but at least I know which one. Uh, and I thought, well, that's probably advantageous. It gets me something to to, to move against Romania as well. I would like to get both in. But I really can't see how Russia is going to let that happen. As it turned out, uh, it, it, he did let it happen. <laughs> I, I definitely would have gotten into both of them. Uh, which is painful in hindsight. Um, but I, I guess I did the, secure, the, the more secure thing of just supporting myself in there. And you can see me helping Austria against Russia. But Russia saw it coming. Uh, and in fact, it was... I should have thought this through a bit more because uh, Russia seeing that move coming is what meant that they couldn't actually defend against these. And Austria was trying to convince me to move into both of them and he was definitely right there. I definitely made that mistake. Uh, what's it? Oh yeah. Um, so it's important. A very important unit this turn. Bohemia. Uh, as you can see... He, his cutting of Vienna support meant that uh, Austria was not able to get into Budapest because he bounced with Russia. And even worse, he lost the unit in Galicia because I had nowhere to retreat to after Russia forces, forced his way in. So, in fact, Germany is on side against us. We know that for sure now because his tap there was, you know was instrumental in bringing us down. I th I think if he hadn't have done that, the game would have turned out very differently. It's it's interesting to look at a pretty innocuous move like this and think about, okay, well, that actually had big ramifications for everything else. Uh, so, yeah, possibly a game-changing moment there. Uh, I realise I'm not set up amazingly to counter Russia. And... I'm back in that old cycle of, oh, I'm not making any progress. I'm getting frustrated at how this, get, this game's going. So we'll see how that worked out in a moment. Uh, Germany into Edinburgh. Rip England again. <laughs> uh, France, meanwhile, attempts to change tactics, go after Italy. Italy sees it coming. Or rather, Italy attempts to get into Spain. France sees it coming. It's hard to know which. Uh, Germany and France still working together against Italy. Moving into Piedmont. Uh, is Italy trying to build a defensive line against France here? As I said, um, Austria 
made us all very afraid of France. And Italy was trying to move into position against him there. Uh, I think that's... Yeah. It should be noted that uh, in the Commonwealth chat, Austria did say, OK, I'm going to give up on surviving now if I can save Italy and Turkey. Which was uh, nice of him. I'm not sure how much I believed it. Uh, he was still certainly speaking as if he believed it. And this is why he let Italy, Italy just waltz into Greece. He just walks in. Uh, so if, if he was doing that, then that's very nice of him. But th that kind of put even more conviction behind what he was saying about how France was going to win. Because if he was willing to let himself die to prop me and Italy up against France and Russia, then I'm inclined to believe him. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the message talking about how I regretted not moving both units into Black Sea and Armenia. And then we had some debate about the fall coming up. So, well, not really a debate. Uh, I just moved back, moved into Armenia again, did the safe thing. Attempted to cut some support, just cut any Romanian support. It didn't really happen. Hold on, I've, I'm on the wrong page here. I appear to have not written anything, anything down for this turn. Huh. <laughs> not sure what happened there. Uh, God, okay. Uh, anything interesting happened? So yeah, Italy gets Greece and gives Trieste back to Austria in, uh, in exchange. I do the natural thing against Russia over here. But the natural and quite slow thing when I, you know, probably could have done things better. Germany moves against Austria, definitely. So it, it, in actual fact, it's potentially uh, this move into Trieste was in compensation for losing a centre to Germany. France, very clinical, moving against Italy down over here. And England just attempts to get back into Edinburgh just in case. I don't know what was going on there, but uh, they they are over. Florida man is very much dead. Uh, did I really not write anything down for this turn? Oh, I did. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong page. My bad. Uh, France, yeah, France repositioning against Italy. Rip England for good. So Florida Man has put out a few videos already. Uh, he put out one when he was eliminated, talking about his view of the game. And an, another one a bit later, talking about his predictions. And he says he's going to, going to make a final one shortly about how the game actually turned out. So I definitely chose to check those out uh, to see what actually happened. To, for England to just collapse so entirely. And yeah, I've got, a, once again, good defensive position. No real chance to actually attack anywhere and make progress because there's just so many units that you can support with here. Uh, yeah, this was an interesting message from Russia. Um, it just didn't understand why I was working with Austria against him. He was very... He sent many, many messages to me trying to convince me to turn back immediately when I stabbed him. Which was a good sign that it was a bad thing for him, that I had stabbed him. <laughs> but yeah, I, I refused to give in, main, again, mainly because I wanted interesting things to happen and I wanted to make progress myself. So yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go on. Builds in 1904, England disappears. There's nothing interesting in the builds here. Uh, it's the negotiation that follows. So that we had a, a discussion about how Austria and I could move forward together here against Russia. Uh, and, you know, we decided, okay... Maybe, I, I would like Sevastopol, obviously. He would like Romania. We can only really guarantee one of them. Uh, yeah, we'll try 
those moves and see what happens. So let's see. Yeah, in spring, what actually happened was Austria did get Romania, which was good, which was nice. Um, I think, you know, I could I could have moved in, but I think for Austria's sake, he had to move Budapest in to actually guarantee Romania. Uh, I I don't want to work through the move combinations again now, but yeah, it was something tactical to that in that respect. Uh, Italy still bu building his wall against France, who is still the apparent enemy number one at this stage, even though Germany is a bit stronger. I probably should have noticed that and done something against Germany instead of being too afraid of France. I blame Austria. <laughs> That's it. it's Austria's too convincing. He was too convincing uh, in, in saying that France was going to win. It's also around this point... Uh, that I entered exam season at university for this year. And I just lacked the mental capacity to deal with this game for a long period. And that had... That had impacts not really on the tactics I was using, um, but on definitely on the negotiations. Because you remember how I went on about how long it took me to actually turn against Russia or decide between Russia and Austria. I didn't want to go through that again for at least the period of exams. So I thought, well, I'll just go with the status quo for now. I can defend myself perfectly adequately. I will just do whatever Austria tells me to do. And I don't have to think about it too hard. Which Russia was annoyed at. And I've, I'm sorry, Russia. Very sorry. But I really, you know, didn't have the mental capacity to do anything else during that exam season. Uh, what happened in fall, I did exactly that. I just went with the status quo, supported Austria, tried to get it to Sevastopol, knew it wouldn't work. I was getting very frustrated with Sevastopol. <laughs> I, I will be frustrated with Sevastopol for a long time in this game. Anything else interesting? Uh, France gets into Tuscany. So Italy's wall has kind of fallen apart. I feel that uh, maybe they could have thought of that, thought of a better move combination. I don't know. Maybe there isn't one. Who knows? I, I suppose, yeah, Venice was needed to defend against Germany there. But yeah, uh, France gets behind the wall and suddenly things are a bit, a bit uh, squeaky bum time for Italy there, I should say. Uh, interesting thing happening up here in Denmark. Germany just leaves it for Russia to walk in. Was it a gift or was it a Russian stab? Had Russia convinced Germany to move out and take an advantage or was that agreed between them? I later found out that it was in fact a gift as part of their alliance as Germany was obviously making gains while Russia was uh, getting nowhere against me. And kind of needed compensation for losing Romania. Uh, and I believe, yeah, it, it came back to be an important factor later when I was talking to Russia again. But we'll, we'll get there momentarily. So that was full. Uh, into the builds phase. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, that's just Austria pointing out. So that, this was a message from Austria to me in Italy and uh, pointing out it's annoying that France got three. And he said that there was some indication that there was going to be a stab in the north. And I, it's possible he was referring to this business with Denmark. But he never really elaborated on that. And I probably should have pressed him further to ask what exactly that would be. Because that would have been very useful to us. So we move on to the builds. Russia gets another army. Or gets an army back, I should say. Uh, very annoying. Ugh. And I'm st sitting at this point in the game with the fleet in Ionian and the army in Bulgaria. I'm just looking at, at all of this. All of this gre these green fields of Italy over here. And they look tasty. They, they do look very tasty. And I'm thinking, well, 
I could stab him. I could take Naples and Greece very easily. I'm not making any progress with Russia. I could just I could get two. I could grow massive massively in one turn easily. I could even potentially get Romania, depending on what happens. Uh, but as I said, this was exam season, and I wasn't really in the game enough to go with that yet. I d I didn't have the brain <laughs> to work through those combinations and uh, work through what would happen. So once again, I well went with the status quo. Um, I did make it into Romania though. Uh, which was actually Austria's gift to me. As he couldn't actually build another unit since Germany had taken Vienna. So that was Russia's gift to me, and that was fine. France, meanwhile, continues to make gains in the Mediterranean, which was worrying. And I'm feeling at this point, okay, Italy's... Italy is not a secure ally. Well, he's, secure, he's a secure ally, and he's, he's loyal to me. But, um, but he's not doing what we need him to and that's making all of these italian centers looking look increasingly tasty what else have i written down here uh austria said that i could pass off taking romania as a stab to russia but i had actually had very little contact with russia so it would would have been but very little contact with Russia since his flurry of messages trying to get me to turn. So I think it would have been a stretch to say to Russia, OK, I've stabbed, stabbed Austria now. We're friends again. <laughs> Without any actual negotiation behind it. So I, I decided not to do that. I just took Romania, which was very nice. I'm, I'm happy about that. Got managed to grow. Uh, my plan was just from for the next turn was just to hold Romania, uh, keep hitting Sevastopol just in case Russia gets frustrated and makes a move set that leaves Sevastopol vulnerable, uh, and backfill Italy in his fight with France in the Med. And, uh, yeah, so this is Austria trying, trying to tell me that I should pretend it was a stab. And yeah, in full, that's exactly what I did. I stayed in Romania, Held that. Uh, just gave it extra support, which it didn't need in the end because Russia was uh, doing other stuff. Uh, but it's, it didn't matter because even with all of my support, I couldn't have got into Sevastopol. Sevastopol was... <laughs> Sevastopol was the most annoying centre for me this game, just in general. Uh, something you will notice if you play out all the moves here is that nobody actually moved this turn. <laughs> Every single move order fails. Because they all bounce, or they all they all have their support cuts, and it's just ah, uh, it's a mess. But it, it's fun. Uh, and Italy actually pointed that out in a message to everyone, uh, saying it was like World War One, and it very much, it felt like that, at least for me at this point. It felt like a slog where I wasn't making progress. Like I got in Romania, which was nice, but it was impossible to see how I could get anywhere else without changing my tactic, yet again. Uh, and this was that floor again of me just. Excuse me. Uh, of me just deciding, oh, I'm getting frustrated here. I need to do, to do something different without really playing that thought through to the conclusion and thinking thinking long term about it. Uh, France, Germany, and Russia are still doing their thing, working together. You can see down here in Venice, trying to attack Venice, and trying to move into Austria but failing but yeah everyone stayed exactly where they are how nice builds I finally get another build get an army in Constantinople and it was at this point that I finished my exams and could actually focus on the game again and with the game so static like literally static nobody moved I decided once again I need to inject something into this game. I'm going to do something crazy. I'm looking at those Italian centers and thinking, hmm, nice. But I didn't want to stab in the spring. Because if you stab in the spring, then they have a chance to retaliate and take stuff back before the fall. And then you don't get the builds. So I thought, well, I can just position myself to better stab Italy. 
uh, in the spring and then actually go through go through with it in the fall. And I was speaking to Russia about it at this point, so planning from the beginning of 1906 how I would stab at the end of 1906. So yeah, uh, Russia was suggesting, yeah, you know, as he had been, we should work together. I said I'll stay as is for this turn. I can't st stab. Have I got the? Yeah, I I can't stab in spring 1907. I should sorry. I meant 1907 for all of the previous times I said 1906. I can't stab in spring 1907. I'm going to have to wait till fall. Uh, and I was like looking at... I was particularly interested in Venice, right? Because Venice almost fell the previous turn. And with extra French help here, it didn't really have long for the world. So I was... Uh, uh, the plan for the Commonwealth was for us three to defend as a team against the rest of the world. And that wasn't really working. Like, Austria and... I was certainly holding up my part of the deal. Um, but that wasn't particularly hard. You know, as Turkey, being Turkey, just stays in the corner. It's fine. Uh, Italy was definitely losing ground to France quite a bit. Austria was losing ground to Germany and Russia, but was still holding his own, still doing well. But I was looking at Italy and thinking, okay, he's he's gonna crumble pretty soon, and then what do we do in the Commonwealth? Like, we we've staked our future. Austria was willing to die for this, and it's not gonna work. So I, I, all of these were factors in kind of convincing me to change my mind. And so in the spring, uh, I did. I continued as I was ostensibly working with Italy and Austria. I passed this move here, Constantinople into Bulgaria. I said, oh, it's defensive. It can give support to Romania so that the fleet of Lexi can do something else. Which, it, you know, if I had not stabbed at this point, that would have been a fair way to go forward. Uh, sorry, I need to flip my notes over. Yep, same story. And then in the message... Russia was pointing out that Venice is going to fall. Because you see that France actually does get into Tuscany now. So with Tuscany and Piedmont and Tyrolia surrounding it, Venice is done for. So I, I, that was the tipping point for me. I thought, okay, Venice is going to fall. Italy's dead. I should stab now. I, I should take the opportunity now. My reliance on an... In a, in a, yeah, sorry. My reliance on an Italian wall was mistaken, and I should. Uh, it's now time to jump ship. And so my plan. It's pretty obvious, I guess. Uh, Bulgaria into Greece, Ionian into Naples, get two builds. Wahe. Well, Russia also wanted support into Budapest. Now, I. Knowing that I was switching teams again, I kind of blindly followed this suggestion. Uh, I feel like that was perhaps not the best move there. Because, well, I think um, in one of Florida Man's videos talking about the late game, he he pointed out that I, I, I made a very big mistake there in weakening Austria so much. And I agree in retrospect. I think I should have pushed Russia more on his proposal there. And thought about alternative options like me moving in, perhaps, or just not giving him support and doing something else, and or even just supporting myself into Serbia rather than going straight for Greece. And I think I was just, you know, I was out of exams. I was excited to be back in the game, but I, I still wasn't thinking things through enough. But yes, uh, in full 1907. We, fight, we get the big stab. And, amazingly, we get the other big stab. <laughs> so, there's a lot to unpack in this turn. Let me get up the pen. I moved here. I moved here. Italy didn't see it coming at all. Uh, France and Germany move into Venice, working together, while Germany stabs France. Which is amazing. Like, per props to Germany, that was... Germany, that that was uh, perfect timing from him. So he got French help, 
in the last bit, last place he needed it, at the same time as actually going forward with his own invasions. You know, this is the beauty of diplomacy. This is why making the moves at the same time is so wonderful, because you get situations like that where people are simultaneously helping you and betraying you. It's wonderful. Uh, so yeah, Russia does indeed move into Budapest. The army has to disband. He backfills. Attempts to support me into Black Sea. Uh, sorry, support Black Sea into Romania. I'm not sure why. I think it was just, just in case. France makes yet more progress against Italy in the Med. Further adding to my resolve that yes, this was the right decision. Uh, but yeah, that move of Galicia into Budapest. I think that was a big mistake on my part of supporting that. It allowed because it allowed Russia and Germany to grow. And yet. I was immediately stalled. Like, I took Greece and Naples, but I had no options from there. And I should, once again, should have thought it through. <laughs> should have realised, oh, okay, that's the position I'm going to be in. Uh, yeah, so, it, you know, I didn't really notice that at the time. I thought, okay, that's that's good. I think this has been the perfect turn. And I said as much to Russia. I doubt that could have gone much better for us. So Germany, Stav, and France, just per I, perfect serendipity, I thought at the time. I now know that uh, Russia has, Russia and Germany were uh, probably in cahoots about that. And, you know, there was probably some coordination between the stabs, in fact. But it, it looked like at the time that it was just perfect chance that it happened at the same time. Uh, yeah, so th this was my mistake in underestimating Village Idiot, really. Um, again, once again, it, it took me until the end of the game to actually look up who he was and find out that he was just such a high-rated player. And I should have known that he was talking to Germany at the same time. And you see, his message is here, very thankful, very positive towards me as well. Uh, I should have noticed, <laughs> once again, I should have noticed how positive they were and I should have realised that he was playing me. But, you know, that's spoilers. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, yeah, especially note this final part of the message where he wants me to ease up pressure around the Black Sea. So, yeah, we that was amazing. We did it. We're working together. Do you think you could get rid of some of your units in a place I can invade? I, I should have noticed. Well, I did notice that. And I was... Resistant to the idea. Uh, and I, I did come up with the idea like we could just successively remove a unit so I could move Black Sea out, then he would move something else out, then I could move Armenia out, so on. And just as kind of a progressive demilitar demilitarization. So th that was an idea. And uh, Austria, meanwhile, uh, worked his silver tongue. To, again, to try and convince me to jump ship straight back. Uh, he's make, making me fear Russia very much. Which I should have been. I think he was right on this occasion. But, I, you know, I, I had... I wasn't play, being completely defenceless, right? I knew that even if things went south, I had this line here. And even if I moved some of those lines around, he couldn't really do much. Just once again, the beauty of being Turkey, the blessing and the curse. I'm just, it's its so impossible to get through this line here a lot of the time. Sometimes, well, sometimes you can, and then it's wonderful. But in this game, at least, it was very much a stalemate. Uh, I, I was, yeah, so Russia, uh, Austria's silver tongue, I was kind of getting a boy who cried wolf feeling from Austria a lot, because remember back when he said that Russia had this big stab planned on me and then that didn't come to fruition and he said this was going to something else was going to happen and it didn't happen and it, he was right on a couple of occasions but I was at this point just incredibly suspicious of every time he tried to send long, long reams of text to convince me of something even though I had on the last occasion actually gone through with it and joined the Commonwealth because I determined that was the best thing to do at the time. So that made me a little distrustful of Austria. Uh, maybe that's unfair to him. 
but yeah that's that's the position i was in um i was unwilling to trust as much of what he said at the moment anyway yes so it, here we go yeah another big message from austria we get to the builds and look at me i am ginormous i get two more builds i'm on seven centers uh, currently third in the game behind Germany and Russia now that Germany has run into France. I th I, at this point, I think, okay, everything's looking good. It's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I really should have looked a bit deeper beneath the surface because it wasn't. I knew in particular at this time that even though I'd taken Naples, I had no hope of uh, keeping it because it was surrounded by Italy and soon to be surrounded by France as well. I had no idea how France would react to me. We hadn't actually met on the battlefield yet. So my plan was to move out of Naples and go somewhere else. <laughs> maybe Tunis, if France left it alone. Uh, maybe Albania or Ad Adriatic, if not. I did stand to lose a unit there, but I thought it was a decent trade-off in that case. P -p -p that's that sheet done. I've got like five sheets of paper here. I'm on the last one. It's fine. We're nearly there. Nearly there. Uh, ba -da -ba. So, this was the message with Russia where we decided um, what we should do moving forward here. And we decided, okay, we are going to ease some pressure around the Black Sea. Now, this was the last communication I had with Russia the entire game. So you can kind of tell what's about to happen. And I should have been able to tell what was about to happen. Because look at Romania here. Look at all these units around it. Look at them. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm at a loss to explain. Um, let's just see what happens. Ta-da! <laughs> another stab. Russia just walks into Romania. So that was my biggest mistake of the entire game. Um, I, I knew that the moveset was possible. I knew that it was entirely possible for Russia to just walk into Romania. And I guess it was just a, a combination of different thoughts about it. Like I wanted to prove that I was a loyal ally for longer than one turn. You know, I, I wanted... I'd been flip-flopping quite a bit between the two different alliance structures and only spending a couple of turns in each of them. And I wanted to... I wanted to prove myself, in a way. I, I wanted to be loyal. I wanted to trust someone. And so I saw this move set, and I just discounted it. I didn't pay it enough attention. I... I, I yeah. Yeah. Uh, the really annoying thing is... The really, really annoying thing is, if I had done that, supported by that, and supported by that, I could have taken Sebastopol. <laughs> I could have finally broken through that barrier that was frustrating me the entire game. Uh, and I didn't. I really should have seen that. I don't know why I didn't. I, I didn't have exams at this point. I don't have that excuse. I, I think I was just feeling really guilty about how much I'd screwed Village Idiot, because um, if we go back, da da da, that, that message there, uh, that one, was it something I said? I, I felt bad about it. Like, this was a guy who jumped into Russia's shoes, and then I'd stabbed. And, I don't know, I didn't know him. I didn't know who he was. I just felt bad, and I wanted to help him. I, I'm terrible at diplomacy, people. I'm, t I'm too nice. Uh, I'm not. As this game shows, I was stabbing people left, right, and centre, but I, I felt bad about it, and that's what matters. <laughs> right. Uh, what else do we have here? Germany powers into Trieste, off his own back. Further powers into France. You can see over here, nothing France can really do at this point. So it's really not looking good for me. Since I have had to vacate Naples, France has moved into a position where they could still take Tunis anyway, so I can't. I, that may not be an option for me. And this, this mess. 
Uh, so it was not looking good, and I decided, right, something needs to change because Germany and Russia are too powerful. I don't like Russia anymore. I'm sorry I felt sympathy for Russia. And I just joined together everyone else and said, we need a united front against them. Uh, I Yeah, wanted a united front. I, we should coordinate our moves. We came up with a move set that we was, would be, would work, or at least, well, w w that we all agreed on. And I thought, okay, this is pleasant. We're all friends. It's all going to work. Uh, France, kept, well, France suggested some moves here. Uh, suggested I should go Ionian to Adriatic. Uh, yeah, he came up. Came up. He suggested some moves. He also suggested that Greece should come over here, be convoyed by the fleet that will be here, so that it can swing round and attack Russia from here. Is that even an arrow? I don't know. That's a house. Uh, so France had some good ideas, and I thought, yeah, they all seem sensible. And then everything got a bit more complicated when Austria messaged the Commonwealth again and said, I hate that plan. I don't like France. <laughs> uh, so he was coming up with a lot of... A, a long list of ideas and reasons to hate France. And Italy fully agreed with that. They, they deduced that what France really wanted was Italian and Austrian territory. And I, I thought that was, I thought that was a bit mean of them. Um, and it took, it, I, I was then once again caught between a rock and a hard place because like I had to, I had to stab France. Or I, I was either going to work with France or work against France. And France and I had got good relations uh, the whole game, even though we hadn't really interacted much. And I was disappointed, as I said here, disappointed to see that both were opposed to the idea of working with him, especially since I saw it as really the only option we had left. Uh, but but uh, any, what else do I have in my notes here? I, I eventually agreed to it, partly because Austria and Italy were pushing for it so hard, and yet they seemed to be the ones who were stood to lose the most. Because the way I saw it was they would help... France disappear. Blah 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 blah. Goodbye, France. And then Germany would be here and ready to sweep in and take them both. And I was still over in my corner, surviving. And I thought, well, if their plan is going to end up with them dead and me surviving, then why shouldn't I trust it? You know, now, now that I say that out loud, now, now I say that out loud, it sounds it's like a very stupid way to think. I don't think I'm very good at diplomacy. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So I, I, for whatever reason, I did eventually agree to stab France. I decided I'm going to trust your plan since getting France might, to fall might be the only way to we get Germany to reconsider. Yes, it was at this point that after like six years in game time, I finally reconnected with Germany. Uh, it was unsuccessful, however. So this, this is my attempt to be convincing. Uh, if you want to pause here and read all this, this is my best attempt to be the most convincing I possibly could, and I uh, possibly could. And Germany just wasn't having any of it. <laughs> I told him, "Okay, you're gonna have to stab. One of you and Russia is gonna stab each other at some point. I want to be on your team for that." And Germany was like, "No. I want France dead. I want France dead first. And fair enough to him. But yeah, it was very annoying for me because that just meant that they were gonna grow unconstrained." I reported back to the anti-Germany-Russia alliance. No luck getting Germany to turn. He said he would consider it if France were out of the game. Austria's message, Germany only wants one thing. France dead. <laughs> France, well, that's not very nice. That was quite funny. But yeah, uh, knowing that Austria was what also wanted France dead, this message takes on a, a, some extra meaning here. So I've just noticed I have like 10 minutes to go until I have to do something. So I need to be quite quick here. So in full 1908, uh, I moved against Russia, was able to defend fine. I knew I'd be able to defend fine in this position, which was 
in a way even more frustrating because it just made, made it feel like nothing I did mattered. <laughs> Uh, I did take France's advice to convoy to Smyrna and give Austria Greece so that he could prop himself up. Otherwise, we would have come, ended up in the position where uh, Germany and Russia could just walk into Serbia together and there's nothing we could do to stop them. And it turns out that Austria and Italy were right about France. He just tried to take Tunis. After convincing, convincing me for so long to try and go up into the Adriatic, uh, so that he could have free access to it. I just well, I I I just stopped him because that's what Austria and Italy told me to do, and it was right on this occasion. So I, I took France's advice in some some respects and went way against it in others. Uh, Italy managed to push back France and Germany out of Venice. That was fun. Austria took Greece, as as I said. Germany is very much decimating France now. France is dead. And it was that, you know, at this point that I kind of... Uh, I regretted trusting Austria's judgment on this ages ago so much. I mean, that's that's not his fault. That's mine. Um, when he said France is going to win the game, I kind of took that to heart a bit too much. And it was this point that I realised that that was very much not the case. Uh, Italy did indeed take back Naples from me. That was agreed. As part of the help for it in a better Italian defence. And then we move on to the builds. Oh, I'm on the last page of my notes. Can I make it in time? Let's see. And all of a sudden, I'm back down to four units. So yeah, so so much for that, that growth. That was very temporary and very useless in general. Uh, Naples. I suggested to Italy that Naples was useless in its current position, so perhaps I should convoy to Albania since we've got a bit of a... If if Germany manages to get into Albania, then we have a bit big problem, because assuming they backfill there, then they, the combined might of uh, Germany and Russia is powerful enough to break through into Serbia. So I was suggesting, right, to stop that, I could just convoy you here. But no. Uh... What were the reasons for the no? Let me go into that. So, uh, Italy was trying to woo Germany, I should say. Uh, yeah, Italy was trying to woo Germany in, in to kind of be against France, and Germany liked that because he was against France at this point. And having watched uh, Ed's videos, it turns out he was against France from the, from the beginning, which was funny. Uh, so we decided, okay, that's going to be a pretty anti-German move, so we don't want you to do that, so we can keep you on on side with Germany a bit more. But, so yeah, there was the messages. Deciding that in spring, uh, all, we did all the obvious moves, me, Austria, and Italy. Uh, we just did what we thought we were going to do. I got a last-ditch attempt from France to try and convince me not to help Italy. Uh, and he was trying to play up how Italy was more of a threat to me, and I don't think he was. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Italy will disagree with me on that. Uh, yeah, nothing much here. Our, our plan at this point, right, we were going to hold station and accelerate the fall of France, because our only hope was that Germany and Russia would stab each other. And we knew that would only happen after, well, Germany, for Germany, would he would only stab Russia if France was dead. So we were just trying to kill France as quickly as possible, <laughs> so that Germany would in fact turn. So, uh, but but uh, yeah. So Italy trying Italy asking for Tunis instead of supporting Mian, so that he could keep more units. I decided that was fair, since my extra, any extra units I I was I had a fine defense over here with just three units, and any extra units he got would actually be much more important in that defense. Fall 1909, more of the same, killing France, or, well, not killing France, but letting France die. Russia and uh, Germany, pretty clinical, like Russia gets into Brest. Um, Germany gets into Venice. They're just, they're a bit of a steamroller at this point. It's hard to see how they can change anything. Uh, da, 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 but, uh, yep. And build 1909. So, yep. France disbands some things, Germany and Russia build some things, as expected. Nothing really surprising here, until we get to this message. And this message came in in the build phase of 1909, 
And Jamini says, okay, um, I know there's going to be a stab and Russia's going to stab me. And I want this game to end. <laughs> let's, let's do a draw, a six-way draw. Uh, and th this was a very big surprise. Like, I was expecting the game to draw drag on for much longer. Like I said, we were going to go on until 1915, unless we had a victory or a draw before then. And Germany, so Germany's message very much came as a surprise. And everyone seemed to agree with it, which strategically makes perfect sense. But I was kind of against it, because it just... I'm sure you watching this now... I I'll tell you, right, we did agree to a draw. You watching this now will find that quite uh, quite disappointing, pro probably. You would have liked to watch. I would have liked to have watched whatever was going to happen between Germany and Russia. But uh, it didn't happen. We didn't get to see. Maybe it would have been boring, but we don't know. And I, t I said as much. You know, I feel like it's going to be less interesting this way, a bit of an anticlimax. But I, I, in the end, you know, I... As it happened, I didn't want to be the one person holding out against this kind of victory. Well, not victory. Um, I, I didn't want to be the one, the one guy who was just saying, no, let's keep going, let's keep going, when everyone else was voting. So I voted to draw. Everyone else voted to draw as well. And <laughs> we ended up with a six-way draw. So England was eliminated and the rest of us drawn. That was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel very sorry for Florida man here. Uh, but uh, so yeah, uh, Umble the Heap, the game master, actually said, "Screw you for agreeing to a draw." <laughs> I, I mean, I agree, but I also did agree to the draw. So I don't know what 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 defense do I have there? And that was how the game finished. Uh, Russia, Russia, and Germany tied on eleven. In third place was me, amazingly, with four. France and Italy with next with three, and Austria with two, and England eliminated. So there you go, that's the end of the game. So let's let's take a look at my initial goals and see how well I actually met them. I did indeed survive past 1902. <laughs> um Yeah, I, I I as soon as I got Turkey, I knew that was guaranteed, so that wasn't really that interesting. But I did survive much longer than that, and I'm I'm proud of myself for that. You know, I I said I'm inexperienced, I'm actually very good at the game, and I did manage to survive for a decent time. I survived till the end of the game. I came third, technically. I <laughs> I came third. I survived. Uh, don't completely embarrass myself. The jury's out. Um, I did make some very stupid moves, mostly out of my own. I don't know, my, my own loyalty or mistaken loyalty in places. So I think those were quite embarrassing. Um, I did, but you know, I survived. I made sensible moves as well. And so, you know, a bit of a mix, a bit of a mix. End up with something entertaining. Also a bit of a question mark there. Because, well, there were some big turns in there, some very entertaining turns. There was a lot of stagnation as well. Especially from my perspective. And also ending on a six-way draw is, from that position, was the least interesting way for it to finish. So I apologise to everyone watching this, because I'm I'm sure you would have wanted to watch a fight to the finish as well. But that didn't happen. So I'm sorry. Hopefully you did find the rest entertaining, though. So what can we learn from all this? I've got, like, three minutes. I could do this. What can we learn? Uh, don't flip-flop between alliances just because you aren't making progress. <laughs> this was uh, one of my fatal flaws throughout the game. I got frustrated at the stagnation and didn't think the long game. Didn't, th didn't think through what would happen with my alliances. Keep up communication even when you don't think you need it. Remember I said there was that six-year gap between communication with Germany? I should have been speaking with Germany a lot and maybe through repeated... You know, I, I could have worn him down and got him to turn on Russia earlier or at least made him more receptive to me as an ally against Russia. Research the players beforehand. Uh, my, yeah, I, I did just neglected to understand who Village Idiot was, and that was a big mistake because he's a very good player, and I tip my hat to him because he caught me unawares, and I, yeah, that was a big mistake. 
So definitely research who you're playing with beforehand. Obviously, that's not going to apply in me it, not going to apply in most diplomacy games because you're playing with random internet strangers. But in something like Media Wars, where you do have that luxury, I really should have done that. Don't play diplomacy during exam season. <laughs> Otherwise, you will switch off your brain for a part because it's it's taken up too much with uh, topology. And Flash from Legendary Tactics has a silver tongue. It just does. It, it send, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it works to his benefit, sometimes it works to his detriment when I realise that he's just crying wolf everywhere sometimes. But then it, then sometimes he's not. I don't know. I, it, it's hard. It's hard to trust him sometimes. I'm sorry, Flash. I'm sorry that you, if you're watching, but yeah. And uh, finally, uh, I'm not ruthless enough for online diplomacy. <laughs> I felt really bad about all the stabs I made. And they, my feel, my feeling bad about those stabs came back to bite me when I wanted to be loyal to those people trying to make up for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I should play online diplomacy. I just, I, face to face, funnily enough, when I'm stabbing my friends in the back, it's fine. Like, it's fine, because I know them. But when it's random internet strangers and all they know about me is, oh, he's that guy on the internet who stabbed me. It's not very nice. I, I don't think that's... I don't like to be that person. Yeah. So yeah, th those are my conclusions. Uh, there we go. I've got to the end. Just about on time. It's, yeah. Uh, I guess all that remains for me to do is thank everyone who was participating. Thank the people who invited me. Uh, it was a very fun experience. I'm very glad I did it. Even if the outcome was a bit disappointing in the end. But that's, you know, that's diplomacy. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what I should say. Thank you, thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments down below if you have any thoughts on what I should or shouldn't have done or what everyone else should have done. Definitely go and watch everyone else's retrospectives to learn what they were doing the whole time. It's been very interesting for me to see the trickle of information from everyone else in that, in that regard. Uh, yeah, I will leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.